Trapcast Express. Trapcast Express. It's Monday, April 3rd, 2017, and we've got some catching up to do here with recent stories. But first, in case you're not aware, on March 29th, we released episode number 17 of our regular full-length Tradcast program. Tradcast 17 is an hour and 23 minutes in length and full of great stuff. So check it out. Go to tradcast.org and look for episode number 17. All right, what's been going on in Novos Ordo land? Well, a little March madness in Rome. On March 27th, Francis received for their mandatory five-year visit the Novos Ordo Bishops of Canada, and according to one of them, Michael J. Miller of Vancouver, Francis explained to them the reason why St. Peter was crucified upside down. Quote, He spoke about Peter, about the fact that he was crucified head first so that God could wash his feet. Unquote. That's a direct quote from this uh, Bishop Miller of Vancouver from a report written in Italian by Vatican journalist Andrea Gagliarducci. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Then the Novos Ordo Church in Egypt has released the official logo for France's trip at the end of April to that country. And you'll be happy to hear that this logo, unlike many others of France's journeys, actually contains a cross this time and even a beautiful one. Of course you know that that comes at a price, right? Yeah. Well, you see, the cross is displayed right next to the Muslim crescent, the half moon symbol of Islam. And so the logo visually puts both religions on an equal level. And the crescent is placed before the cross, of course. So the official papal logo for what is styled an apostolic journey now includes, I think for the first time ever, the symbol of a non-Christian religion. That is where we're at in 2017, folks. In that logo, by the way, Francis is referred to as the Pope of Peace, What exactly this man has done for peace, other than repeat the usual naturalist blather about dialogue and counter and dignity, oh, and and, and playing soccer and praying with other religions, is anyone's guess. In any case, we've got a blog post on it on the Novos Ordo Wire, dated March 31st. Oh, by the way, did you hear about this? <laughs> On Saturday, March 25th, Francis visited the city of Milan in northern Italy and decided he was going to do his business in a portable toilet that had been set up specifically for him. Not, mind you, in a discreet spot somewhere, but right next to a stage for musicians that had been set up for the event. Yep, you can find that on our blog as well for March 25th under the appropriate headline, Vatty leaks. Francis flaunts use of a portable toilet during Milan visit, and of course, there's um, there are photos and a video uh, available. Now, let me be clear about this because a lot of people tend to misunderstand. Yes, of course, we all have to go at some point, but there's a discreet way of doing it, and then there's the "I'm so humble" Francis way of doing it. And according to Vatican insider Ulrich Nerzinger, who, uh, by the way, writes for the Vatican's own newspaper, Osservatore Romano, the whole thing had been planned in advance. What we have here is yet another in-your-face humiliation of the papacy. Not that the man actually is the Pope, but in people's minds he is, and that is where all the damage is caused. In any case, if you want something more hardcore, we've got that too. On March 17th, during a private audience, Francis is reported to have cracked a joke about the Most Holy Trinity. Yes, he directly blasphemed God himself. Now, since I refuse to repeat the words that he said in this podcast, if you want to know what he said, you'll have to look it up yourself. Go to... Uh, our blog at novosordowatch.org slash wire, or just go to novosordowatch.org and click on Novos Ordo Wire in the 
menu uh, bar at the top and find the post dated March 27th entitled Blasphemy, Francis Jokes About Most Holy Trinity. Then there was a Vatican-initiated conference in Rome on Martin Luther and the Reformation from March 29th through the 31st. And of course, Francis had to give an address about that in which he expressed his gratitude for such a wonderful thing and called it, quote, the results of the working of the Holy Spirit, unquote. You know, after 500 years, they're still trying to discover the real Martin Luther and what he really said or really meant. All right, we'll close with another scandal. And for this one, make sure you don't have children listening. On March 24th, Francis happily received the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, Xavier Battel, together with his quote-unquote husband. And yes, since Francis, official Vatican protocol allows for sodomites to bring their partners. You know, mercy. Patel's politics is totally in accordance with his lifestyle. Under his government, Luxembourg introduced so-called homosexual marriage, adoption rights for homo-pervert couples, and, of course, eased abortion restrictions. Now, don't say, well, you don't know what Francis said to them. You don't know that he didn't rebuke them. Yeah, right. First, the protocol was changed. Secondly, since the two perverts were received in public, the scandal is public. And hence, in order to avert or address the scandal, any sort of rebuke must also be in public, or at least made public afterwards. That is how Catholic morals work. Absent any redressing of scandal in public, we must and can safely assume precisely what is clear from the outward actions. The Vatican has no problem with sodomy. That is the message being sent. Remember, actions speak louder than words. And that message is being heard loud and clear. Tradcast Express is a production of Novus Ordo Watch. Check us out at tradcast.org. And if you like what we're doing, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at novusordowatch.org slash donate.